Yeah, I think one of the big applications of design thinking is personal, sort of personal transformation. Again, as we said, it's just another tool in your tool belt, but it's a tool that happens to work really well on hard problems. And one of the hardest problems you've got is what do you want to be when you grow up? And this isn't a problem that's just college students. This, every time we talk about designing your life in the class we're doing, um, you know, 30-somethings who are thinking about, you know, changing jobs, 40-somethings who are thinking about changing careers, 50-somethings or 60-somethings who are thinking about their encore career, um, all want to know, you know, what am I going to be when I grow up? It's a question that really never goes away because hopefully your life is fun and creative and you never grow up. But, it's an, but it creates anxiety, and it particularly creates anxiety or at that point uh, in senior year when you're about to trans, you know, the big transformation occurs from I'm in college or I'm, in, I'm a student to no, I'm not a student anymore. We call it the decision explosion. Prior to that, all you had to do was work hard in high school to get into a good college, pick a major, get through the major, you know, you've jumped all the hurdles. It's like, oh my God, now what do I do? And it is, a, if you think about it, it's a classically wicked problem. You can't get that much data about your future. You don't, know, uh, you don't know what you really want to do. This notion that you have a passion and you follow it, I think, is one of the most destructive ideas that anybody talks about because the research says less than 20% of, the, of, of anybody, college students or anybody, actually knows their passion and, is, and, and knows how to fulfill it. We find that most people find their passion by working into something that then becomes the thing that they're passionate about. And so, you know, college students have a lot of uh, what psychologists call dysfunctional beliefs. They, they believe that their major is going to determine what they do for the rest of their lives, which isn't true. Ten years out of school, less than 20% of the people are doing anything that has anything to do with their major. They believe that they have to make one choice and that this choice is going to plot their trajectory forever. Um, this generation will absolutely have at least two completely different careers, maybe three, because this may be the first generation to work 70 years, right, past college. So um, the Designing Your Life class just sort of jumps in and all that stuff. It says, look, it doesn't matter where you are, wherever you, know, wherever you are, you are here. And from here, we can't navigate to your future because that's not possible. We don't know where your future is. But we can do what we call wayfinding. And we can run prototypes. Um, you know, an internship is, in a sense, a prototype. Uh, shadowing a doctor for a day and seeing if you really want to be a surgeon is a prototype. It's living in the world of the people who are doing the thing you think you want to do. And so the class is really impactful. It's the one class I get more spontaneous emails, you know, from people out two years, three years, four years out saying, I'm still using all these techniques. It's, fan it's fantastic. I really feel like I'm getting the life I want. Uh, it's very generative. My friends are asking me to teach them how to do this. So, um, you know, the design method really works when you have these fuzzy and uh, ambiguous problems like what do you want to be when you grow up?